In this little video, we're going to look at some of the exponent laws. But we're only going to look at powers that have integers for exponents. That means the exponent will only be, um, will not be a fraction, but the exponent could be positive or it could be negative. And we're going to look at a few of the different uh, laws of, of the exponents. And we'll start first with the product rule. And the product rule says this. It says if we have a to the power of m, and we multiply that by a to the power of n, then this will equal a to the power of m plus n. And let's look at an example here. If we have x to the power of 3, and we multiply that by x to the power of 4, well, then that we should just add the exponents, so x to the power of 3 plus 4, which equals x to the power of 7. And here's why. x to the power of 3 really just means x times x times x times x to the power of 4, which is x times x times x times x. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x's multiplied together. So hence, x to the power of 7. So the shortcut rule is when we are multiplying powers and the bases are the same, we then add the exponents. That's the product rule. So now we'll look at the quotient rule. It says this. If we have a to the power of m and we divide by a to the power of n, well, that will equal a to the power of m minus n. And let's look at an example of that. Let's say we had x to the power of 7, and we're going to divide that by x to the power of 5. Well x to the power of 7 would be x times x times x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and dividing, x divided by x is 1, those would cancel out, and we would have two x's remaining and x times x is x squared. So again the shortcut here, the quotient rule says when we have powers and the bases are the same, they're both x or they're both a, whatever, we take the exponent in the numerator and we subtract the exponent in the denominator. So a to the power m divided by a to the power of n is a to the power of m minus n. Now we'll look at power of a power rule which simply says this, if we have a to the power of m, and then we take that power and raise it to another power, say n, so we have a to the power of m, then to the power of n, the shortcut rule here is to multiply the exponents. So that would be a to the power of m times n. And uh, we can see that easily in example. Let's take a look at, uh, maybe we have x to the power of 3 squared. So we know that we should multiply these exponents, but let's actually see why. Well, x cubed really just means x times x times x. And we now have to square that. That means we need two of those. So x times x times x times x times x times x. Well... How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so instead of having to write all these out, we can see that the shortcut would simply be to multiply the exponents. So a to the power m to the power of n, when we have a power raised to another power, the shortcut rule would be to multiply them. a to the power of m times n. So those are our, our main rules, the product rule, the quotient rule, the power of a power rule. But there's also a few other little things that we should know. Um, the zero exponent rule, and that just means if we have something to the power of zero, by definition, 
this will always equal 1. So anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Now this negative exponent rule is one that lots of students uh, have trouble with. And it simply says this, what if we had something to the power of negative n? This does not make your answer negative. a to the power of negative n, this negative right here, ends up taking the reciprocal of the base. And so a to the power of negative n becomes 1 over a to the power of n. So when you have a negative exponent, it means whatever's down below here, we need to take the reciprocal of that. So for example, if I had 2 to the power of negative 3, the negative would imply that I would need to take the reciprocal of the base, which is 1 half, and then I need to multiply that by itself three, whoops, three times. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Another way you could do this is you could simply go 2 to the power of 3, do that part first. So 2 to the power 3, 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. And then take the reciprocal of 8, which is 1 over 8. So usually I actually do the exponent part first, I get 8. And then I remember, but the exponent's negative, so I need to flip it. Or more correctly, we say take the reciprocal of that, so it becomes 1 over 8. And then if we had, obviously if we started with a fraction, say we had 1 third, and we were going to square that, then, oops, sorry, one-third to the power of negative two, we would flip the base, so one-third, we could flip that around, that would become three now, and now we would have three squared, which is nine. Or we could have done the squared first, so we could have done one-third times one-third to get one-ninth, and then with the negative exponent, take the reciprocal of that to get positive nine. So we actually had this now to the negative one, flip that around would be 9 instead of 1 9. So just remember when the exponent is, is negative, all you have to remember to do is at some point, either first or at the end, take the reciprocal of the base of the exponent. And then just another thing that we need to remember is that if we have more than one thing in a, in a bracket, so say the base is not just one number or one, one letter, one variable, if we have more than one thing that's being raised to the power of 3, we have to remember that everything in the bracket must be cubed. So this is really, it's 2x times 2x times 2x, and 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8, and x times x times x would be x cubed. So remember, when we have more than one thing in a bracket, everything in the bracket needs to be cubed. And that would work for a question like this, too. Say we had x divided by 4, and we wanted to square everything. Everything in the bracket needs to be squared. So x times x is x squared, divided by 4 times 4 is 16. So those are the exponent laws, and they are the ones that you need to memorize so that we can put some of these things to use in some questions. So let's take a look how, now how we would use these exponent laws in working through some questions.